With the new iPad Pros, we got a newly redesigned Magic Keyboard. And this is actually something I'm really excited about. I talked about it a bit in my iPad Pro review, but I wanted to do a dedicated review just about the new Magic Keyboard so I can really dive deep into it. This video is sponsored by Surfshark. Let's get into it. So the biggest change you're gonna notice right away with the new Magic Keyboard is on the inside, it is now made of aluminum. On the outside, it still has that rubbery soft touch material, but on the inside, it has an aluminum palm rest and aluminum around the keyboard as well. I'm really happy to see this change. The old Magic Keyboard wore really quickly, especially where the palms went. It just, that material just wore to your touch, and especially because you're moving around when you're typing and you know the, wearing that material down. The aluminum material just feels so much nicer to type on for a long period of time. Now, I am slightly concerned about the fact that the outside of the Magic Keyboard is still has that rubber soft touch material. It didn't really wear that well. In fact, it, that was one of the many reasons why I covered my Magic Keyboard with stickers was because I'd rather the stickers wear than a $350 keyboard. Now, one thing I did see a lot of people concerned about was the fact that there would be metal, the aluminum would be touching the glass of the iPad when the Magic Keyboard is closed. That's not actually an issue. There is a rubber lip around the keyboard tray. So that way, when the Magic Keyboard is closed, what's touching the the screen is that rubber lip, not the aluminum uh, of the Magic Keyboard. One of the biggest complaints that when the original Magic Keyboard was released all the way back in 2020 was the weight, especially with the 12.9 inch model. It was a heavy beast. It was way past MacBook Air weight and like borderlining on MacBook Pro weight. Now with this new generation of iPad Pro, not only is the iPad lighter, but the Magic Keyboard is also lighter now too. And in fact, the combination of the iPad and the Magic Keyboard together is about the same as a MacBook Air, and it's quite noticeable when you're picking it up and carrying it around. The thing that kind of impressed me about that is when I took a step back and when you realize this is a multi-piece device, so you have the Magic Keyboard, you have the iPad, and on top of that you even have the Apple Pencil. All of those come apart. The MacBook Air is just a single, you know, it's the unibody aluminum MacBook Air. So it's impressive that they were able to get multiple pieces that come together using magnets, which, you know, magnets, they're, they don't weigh nothing. They come together and it weighs about the same as a MacBook Air. It's a very welcome and noticeable change, especially if you carry an iPad Pro around with you every single day. One thing that a, a lot of us that cover Apple, that make videos or podcasts or blogs or all, any of that stuff that kind of covers Apple in this technology sphere, we were all kind of convinced, or most of us at least, or some of us, I shouldn't say all, but some of us were convinced that the new Magic Keyboard would come in a laptop MacBook Pro, MacBook Air style design where it connected on the bottom and it just opened up just like a laptop would. But this Magic Keyboard still keeps that same, what's called a cantilever design where it's kind of just floating above the keyboard. I was kind of surprised by the fact that they kept this design by first, but I went back and watched my original uh, Magic Keyboard review and something I talked about in there and it, uh, it was so obvious to me then and, and it should have been obvious to me now was the fact that the cantilever design is perfect for the iPad because you want to be able to be typing on the keyboard and be able to then reach up and touch something on the display without having to go from here and then tapping on the display way further away. You just want to be tab typing along and then be able to just touch the display. Uh, and the cantilever design is what gives you that. If it was a more laptop-like design, you wouldn't have that. This video is sponsored by Surfshark. Surfshark is a VPN service that protects you and your data. Data is the new gold and some scary people will do some really wild stuff to get a hold of it. I worked in the IT field for about nine years and one day we decided to set up like this fake coffee shop where it had an open Wi-Fi network and like dummy devices. And basically we wanted to snoop on those devices and well, see what we could see. And it was pretty wild, the stuff that we were able to collect. With Surfshark, your traffic is completely encrypted from your device to its destination, protecting your privacy. This really isn't a, well, I have nothing to hide, so I have nothing to lose kind of thing. There's a lot of stuff that people can do with the information they're able to gather from your traffic. Something I really appreciate about Surfshark is they don't keep logs. VPN services that keep logs are defeating the purpose. 
With Surfshark, you're able to change your location. So I can say that I am in the UK or France or Canada, and I can see what, say, streaming services like Netflix have in their categories in those countries. Or if I'm traveling abroad, I could VPN back into the United States and finish a show I was already watching. I really like Surfshark. In fact, it's a service I pay for myself. They didn't just give me a freebie as part of the sponsorship. I'm gonna put a link in the description below for you to go check it out. Use code Lolly for an extra four months for free. Now, another benefit of the fact that the new iPads, especially the 13 inch model iPad Pro weighs less is the fact that the iPad can now sit further back in the Magic Keyboard, which gives you more viewing angles. It can tilt back even further. Now, it's not as dramatic as something like a MacBook Air, MacBook Pro, but it is better, and I will take that because that was a big complaint of the original Magic Keyboard was that it was sitting too far forward. So if you weren't sitting like at the proper angle of a desk, if you were had the iPad in your lap or if you were at kind of a weird angle or a table that wasn't the right level, it was going to be an awkward angle. You couldn't go back far enough. Now it's better, but it could be even better, if that makes sense. I notice the uh, more adjustable viewing angle quite a bit when I'm using the iPad in my lap. That was something that was not, it wasn't like uncomfortable, it wasn't bad with the old one, but the new one is just better at that. Another big complaint, and, and really, like this Magic Keyboard just addresses all of the complaints of the original Magic Keyboard. Apple did a great job of designing this. I, I kind of realized this as I was writing the script. I kept writing the sentence, well, another complaint of the old Magic Keyboard, that they just did a really good job of addressing these issues. So another complaint of the old Magic Keyboard was the lack of a function row. This wasn't something I, like I, on my top wish list of items. This wasn't the number one thing I wanted. I definitely wanted new material. I definitely wanted it to be lighter, but a function row is a very nice addition. Again, this is thanks to the fact that the iPad is now lighter and can sit further back. So there's now more space on the bottom area of the Magic Keyboard where the iPad isn't covering it up. Because before, if they would have added a function row to the older one, it would have had to been like right underneath where the iPad was sitting. So there are a few different function keys. There's support for changing the brightness of the display, quickly launching the app switcher, which would be way more helpful if you can drag apps between stages in this window with stage manager. This window is very limited. It could do a lot more with stage manager. Here's hoping for WWDC. Then there is a spotlight key so you can search anything through the iPad. I'm not sure how useful this key is because you can just also hit command space to bring up spotlight. And for a lot of Mac users and, and you know, people that that's just natural to hit command space rather than a function key. Personally, I would have much preferred to have a dedicated Siri key or a user programmable key. Next to this, you have a dictation key. Really nice if you're like me and you can't spell. If you long press on the dictation key, you will get Siri, which is really great if you enable type to Siri. Do not disturb is next. This just toggles the default do not disturb mode, which if you use that, great. Personally, I wish I could uh, program this to a specific focus mode. Then there are media playback and volume controls, skipping forward and back for songs, play pause, mute audio, and volume up and down. So, so, so incredibly nice to have. I love these. Just being able to reach up and pause music really quick or skip to the next song or control the volume right from the keyboard while I'm typing away has been really nice. The last function key is a lock key. I'm not entirely sure how useful this one is as well because if you just close the lid on the Magic Keyboard, it automatically locks. I guess it's nice that it's there. Eh, I don't see this being as useful. I would have taken a user programmable key over this any day. There's also an escape key on the function row as well. I am so excited for this. There are a few apps that I use that really take advantage of the escape key. Uh, before that, there was an escape key. You either had to hit command period or uh, you could reprogram a modifier key like caps lock or something to be the escape key. Another really nice change to the Magic Keyboard is the trackpad. The last Magic Keyboard, well, was the first keyboard to bring a trackpad to the iPad Pro. But this new Magic Keyboard just takes it to another level. It's just so much better. The biggest change, and I do mean biggest, is the fact that the trackpad is now, well, bigger. 
Such a huge welcome change. Having a bigger surface area means it's easier to drag files, add apps to stage manager, or just scroll a web page. The other change is the fact that the trackpad is now haptic. It no longer physically clicks or moves. The reason why I'm excited about this one is the last one was so loud. If my girlfriend was sleeping next to me, I absolutely would disturb her uh, using that trackpad. And the new one is just so much quieter. The haptics feel really good when clicking things. If you kind of want like a, a little demo of what the haptic engine feels like, go into the music app and load up like a playlist or an album or something like that and go to the screen where you can, you know, rearrange the up next and you will feel the clicks as you rearrange the songs and it feels really good. The trackpad just feels so much better to use. If this was the only change to the Magic Keyboard, I would be satisfied. Luckily, it's not the only change, but this, this was a very, very welcome change. Overall, using the new Magic Keyboard is just nicer and all around improved compared to the previous Magic Keyboard. While the key switches are still the same, the aluminum material gives you know everything a nice premium feel. While I would personally love a bit more travel with the key switches, there's still that same one millimeter key switch travel. This thing is engineered to be so tight and fit like a glove. I don't think that's actually even possible to get more travel. And it doesn't feel bad. I think for 99.99999% of people, they will never notice or care or want more key travel. It's just the mechanical keyboard nerd in me that would like that. Now, what's also really impressive is the 11 inch keyboard. Now I don't have one here, but I have used an 11 inch magic keyboard before in the past. And I got some hands on time with the 11 inch model uh, in New York as well. Uh, the, the new one that is. And it's, nice it's it's interesting what i appreciate about what the fact that they did is the the letters and the numbers they're the full size keys so if you're just typing away you're still getting those same full size keys you're not going to miss you're not going to hit the wrong key but the modifier keys and some of the symbol keys around the keyboard they're like half size or a little bit smaller uh just so they they could fit everything in that design because well you're you can't really get an a full size keyboard to fit with an 11 inch iPad Pro, but they did a really good job of it. Uh, like I said, I've used those keyboards in the past. It takes some getting used to. So if you're going to an 11 inch iPad Pro for the first time and getting one of those keyboards for the first time, it may take you a minute to get used to that keyboard, but it is doable. And that's coming from a huge keyboard snob. But the fact that you get a full-size keyboard with the 13-inch iPad Pro is one of the two big reasons that I always go with the bigger 13-inch iPad Pro. The other one being screen size for apps like Final Cut and Lightroom and Photoshop and stuff like that. Now, the USB-C port on the Magic Keyboard is still just for charging the device. It's just for power delivery. There is no data pass-through whatsoever, which... Is kind of a bummer. I know it has to pass through the smart connectors, so there's gonna be challenges with that. Even if it did do data pass through, it probably wouldn't be as fast as the Thunderbolt port on the side of the iPad. I get that. It would just be nice to have an extra port on the iPad that could do data pass through. There have been times where I needed to plug multiple devices in to copy files over, and it's just frustrating to have to do that one at a time. That being said, the port on the Magic Keyboard actually does charge faster now. It goes to about 29 watts of power delivery. Uh, that's about on average. I've seen it spike to be a little bit higher. I've seen it go lower. When the iPad's battery kind of gets near to 100%, it'll go lower, so it's not constantly charging that battery over and over. Uh, it's nice that that is faster. In fact, I've been using that primarily as the way I charge it, just because I have a USB-C cable right here to the left of me, and I just plug it in right there to the side. It's down low. It's not just getting jammed into the side of the iPad up high. For reference, the USB-C port or the Thunderbolt port on the side of the iPad Pro, that does about 36 watts of power delivery. Don't know why it doesn't do 60 still. Uh, <laughs> I think it should do a minimum of 60 at least, but uh, it does go a bit faster than the port on the Magic Keyboard, but it's not significantly faster. Now, 
I would say the biggest disappointment of these Magic Keyboards is actually the amount of devices it supports. It just supports the new iPad Pros, the new M4 2024 iPad Pros, whatever you want to call them. It just supports that. It doesn't work with the new iPad Airs. It doesn't work with any of the old iPad Pros. It's just these new ones because these new ones are now thinner and lighter. Uh, seriously, they're, it's engineered to be like a glove. You close this thing up, there is no gap. You wouldn't want there to be a gap. Uh, and because of the weight balance, they were able to move the iPad back further. So if you were to put a heavier iPad on this thing, it would just tilt over. It's a bummer because it is a much better product, especially considering uh, how it compares to the older Magic Keyboards and the older Magic Keyboards are what works with the new iPad Airs and the previous iPad Pros and stuff like that. So if you're somebody that's planning on typing or using the trackpad or using this, you know, Magic Keyboard a lot, and you're like, ah, oh, man, I don't know whether to get an older iPad Pro or refurbished one or a new iPad Air or a new iPad Pro. This Magic Keyboard would be a big deciding factor for me at least, especially considering it is the same price as the other Magic Keyboard. So I, I would seriously, like that would push me more towards the iPad Pro than an iPad Air or an older iPad Pro if I was in that kind of like middle ground right there. So that's it. That is the new Magic Keyboard. Let me know what you think in the comments below. My thanks to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. If you liked the video, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe if you haven't already, and have a great day.